Hi guys, this is the next step of tutorials around how to get external data in. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it first of all by using SQL. Um, so setting up an external ADO SQL connection. Then we'll look at how you read CSVs um, and with an example of how you'd read an Excel file as well. But it's normally better to use it as CSV. So let's, let's do um, how we'd do it with um, SQL. So how to import SQL information to a data frame from Microsoft SQL Server. There are other packages but I'm going to be focusing on SQL Server. Um, for MySQL use the rmysql package for Oracle use the R Oracle package for the um, kind of JDBC type of interfaces um, you can use the JDBC interface but what we're going to use be using is the ODBC connections so that uses the R ODBC package so we've we have not I've not actually showed you how to install external packages. So there's a couple of ways we can do this, but I'm going to use it do it by using the install packages command. And then I know what package I'm looking for, so it's the auto RODBC package. So when I click run on this line, just let me restart that. You'll see a command come up saying installing packages. Wait till everything's done. It says it's successfully downloaded. Another way to do it would be to go to the packages tab shown here. Let me just take that up a little bit. Use the install button, go onto the repository section, the CRAN repository, and type what packages require. So as you can see, RABDC is there. I could do it that way and then it stores into my Windows R Win Default 3.2 library. But now we've got that package installed. You don't want to run that again when you run your script, so I'm going to comment that out. So to use external packages, um, you need to use the library function. So this tells R that I want to use the ODBC object library within this, um, this uh, script file. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a connection to the external database. So my connection. Um, we're going to use the. What we're going to use is a connection string. So we're going to use the ODBC driver connects. ODBC driver connect command. So the connection. I'm going to connection command. I'm going to set as connection equal to, and then I'm just going to paste some code that I did earlier. Connection equal to that. Okay. I think I've got one too many parentheses there. Let's make sure that works. Okay, that's not very good. I have not run the library function yet. Yeah, so my connections worked. So what is that actually doing? Let's decompose that connection string. So it's linking it to the SQL Server native client. So it's basically saying use use the SQL Server instance. I've got a SQL Server instance here. So Hudson's is my server name. Let's connect up. It's using my local host, so my machine. It's using the database, which is the one that I've selected. So if I go to my databases, it's using the movies database, which I've um, borrowed off uh, a good friend from Wise Owl Tutorials. Thanks, Andy. Um, and then I'm using it as a trusted connection. So that's how you connect a connection string up. You use the ODBC driver connect command. 
So the next part is actually to bring in which table I want to use. So data, we'll call it. Um, and we're going to use the SQL fetch command. We're going to then use the my connection string first. We looked at the options actually. Channel, SQL table, column names, row names. So I might actually set the column names to true actually. So my connection, I'm going to use the access table. Let me just go back to SQL Server, tables, table of actors. Just select the top 1000 rows gives me all the actors in a table. Okay, could just get rid of the gender and run that again. Okay, so when I go back to um, R, that then if I specify, I think it was column, if I just just let me help on the SQL fetch command. Fetch. See if that comes up with anything. Reading tables from ODBC, SQL fetch, SQL channel, SQL table. Column names equals true, row names equals true. So we want column names. So col names equals true. And obviously that's a useful way to look at what the options are and the parameters and the properties. I'm going to run that line. Now, as you can see, I've got data from my external database. So again, there are all the answers names. There should be 338 variables. If I look in R, there are now 337. Ah, there's no column names, there's 338. So I'm going to set that to false and then I'm going to set row names equal to true, see what that does. I'm going to read a look at my data. Ah, yeah, it's not the column names I wanted, I wanted row names because that's now specified my row names. I could just set that to false as well actually because I don't think that's adding anything because there aren't any row names, just row numbers. Yeah. So yeah, my data's there and that's connected through to my external database. So we've got 338 records and there's 330 record, 38 records here. If I want to run a particular SQL query on that, so SQL command. So I'm going to design this first of all in here. So I'm going to say, let's go to the query editor. You won't have to do this, but select from table actors, I'm going to teach um, SQL another day. Oops, from table actor, let's just do select all for now for a minute. Select all from table actor, invalid object, DBO from table actor. Why is that not working? It is there. I've got it here, look. Movies, DBO, table actor. We'll keep that then, but we'll just call it as, we'll set an alias, actor table, act T, we'll call it. So I'll set an alias on that one. I'm um, we'll get rid of all this spiel. Um, we'll say get rid of that top command as well. Indent this. Let's say selects. Um, act. Now that alias appears. I'm going to say act a name and act t dot gen. Uh, and then I'm going to put where clause in there where my gender is not male or female, shall we say? At t 
Quality is not um, male. Show not equal to male. Agenda. So it gives me all the female actresses. Or could you say equal to male? Let's give us all the men. We'll use that as our query. So I'm going to copy that. And now I'm going to start working with that in R. So obviously it's on different lines, it needs to be on one. So I'm going to put that there after the from and then the where should be at the end of that obviously it goes off my page but I've just designed it in there for easy so if I go here and just close my brackets off now I can copy that whole string double click and I can say a SQL query I'm going to say use my connection first and then I'm going to say all this. I could do another, I could create a variable actually to hold that. Let's do that. Oops. Let's do a variable to hold that because it looks a bit messy. Oh no, it would do. As long as it works. Right. So now if I run those lines, now I've got a SQL command that should be give me a different data frame. And then I can just actually make sure that it is a data frame. So I'll create um subset of male actors we call it. Male actors. Um and I'm just gonna use the SQL command. I'm just going to make a copy of it. Yep. So, male actors is now the data frame that I'm looking for. So it gives me all those actors with my SQL query that I've just stipulated in SQL Server. It's there. Just, just zoom in. So, yep. It's there. Um, and then that's now feeding through to R. And it's giving me that data. Obviously it's all textual, so we'd want some counts or something like that. We have a look at the structure now of male actors. Gives me factor levels. Obviously because I've got one factor, I'd have two factors if it was male or female. Take the class of male actors. I think it would be data frame by now. So yeah, now it's a data frame. But yeah, essentially that is how you connect up. This is the important part, that's the driver. So you need to get, make sure that you get that connection string right. But there are websites online that do specifically tell you how to connect, um, to do a connection string. And it does it for all the different types of uh, connection. So these are just pertinent to SQL Server, but you can look for My, MySQL connections and everything else. But yeah, that's essentially how you get your data linking up into R. Um, catch you for the next one guys, I'm going to show you how you read CSVs. Alright, thanks guys, see you soon.